Now, uh, I, I, uh, after last week, I got a request to read two poems uh, uh, by a poet, a, a poet who does not want their name revealed. They want to be name shy because they have been very, very ill and predicted they would be too ill to stay awake for this recording uh, or in this presentation and ask if it could be recorded, they would like to use it for themselves and ask, I don't know, ask me permission to send it somewhere else. So uh, uh, I should find. So uh, this is somebody who, uh, you remember when uh, Notre Dame caught on fire, you know, what was it? How many, let's see, three years ago now in May. Uh, three years, wow. Or April was it, might have been April. Uh, um, I was on a Metro going to see a woman and I got a texto on the Metro saying, uh, cancel where we were gonna meet, come to my place, Notre Dame is on fire. So, uh, wow, I was in shock on the Metro. And, and so uh, she texted me her address and her address was on the K, an apartment building on the K directly across the street from Notre Dame. And so she was on the sixth floor in this modernized flat with a huge picture window. So I joined her there. Uh, the fire had already started, of course. And I took the elevator upstairs and there we did, we, we, set, we stood in front of this picture window watching Notre Dame burn that evening. Because by chance, that's where she was living, on the Quai Saint-Michel, you know, some uh, short distance away from uh, Shakespeare and Company. So there we go. We saw that horrific uh, uh, life event uh, like that. And so, uh, so this poet who told me, do you remember when we both came out, three of us in Angora Poets uh, that year, uh, writing about Paris, burning, uh, writing about Notre Dame burning. And I said, I sure do remember that. She said, please bring that one back on the anniversary this week in the, in the media. There's been a lot of uh, news uh, presentations about uh, three years after Paris, after Notre Dame burned and uh, the, the reconstruction of the cathedral going on today with clips of what happened at the time. And uh, then, uh, okay, so I'll explain that and I'll explain why she's asked me to repeat a poem I read last week. So here's this one and I simply call it, um, Is Paris Burning? And uh, so here we are, so-and-so, this is for you. Is Paris burning? Is your city burning? Is it too late to wake from our sedated selves? The hoax of, of uh, doctors, little helpers, mind neutering for crowd control, and the crowd is out of control. Sleepwalking this day, murderous mania the morrow. The overseers pour champagne never seasick abroad on their yachts, no vertigo flying their toy jets, sniffing cocaine, what a rush, uh, jailing all the truth say sayers between white lines. The bait and switch illusionists roll, ruin our lives. We running to the Netflix, elections are coming, Mark of the mark the right ballot or take a bullet. Wall Street hemorrhaging money while the West Bank is broke. <laughs> no evidence of God the protector anywhere soon or near. See the slave trade for details. See Armenians for details. See Auschwitz for details. See Custer in a man-made hell. When I find out, bury my heart at wounded knee. I dream Malcolm X is president of the United States of America and the Dalai Lama leads the United Nations. 
Moses trips on the burning bush. Mohammed hangs up his sword and a benevolent dentist extracts Kali's teeth. Mm -hmm. Buddha replaces nonsense with incense. And Sears, oh, Jesus just left Chicago for a room in New Orleans, no forwarding address. Aware, aware is my Coltrane poem. Aware, aware, is Paris burning? Is your, is your city burning? I smell the stench of human flesh. Extinguish the body, mind and soul. Da 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 da. That's all, folks. So, okay, and um, this poem I don't. Well, this poem I have a real uh, ominous feeling about why they want me to read this poem. It's it, uh, remember me. Speak of me as you always done. Remember the good times, laughter and fun. When I was at my best, at times I was down. When you came to greet me, when you came around. Share the happy memories we have made. Remember fondly at my grave. I will be with you in this spring rain. Later on the summer sun. Hear my laughter sometimes pain mixed with life i played the game i'll be the voice on an evening breeze i'll be the friendship when you need i'm peaceful now please be at ease i've rested my eyes made way to sleep our memories are yours yours to keep the law of life Everything must change, except my loss, but say my name. Let your sorrow last for a while. Remember my voice, remember my smile. I've lived a life on my own terms. Be glad for me, don't long and yearn. Live on now as we had done in tears and care to love someone, remember me in sun and rain, quickly call me, now call my name. That, there you are, dear poet. There's the poem dedicated. Wonderful. So, yes. Thank you. Yes. So uh, I'm uh, satisfied reading two poems in this round and uh, so uh, this has been a nice way to get started. I can say that for sure. And why don't we take a break and uh, come back in a few minutes and have everyone read again. And uh, David, maybe you'll pause the recording and turn us back on when we come back on. There's two sides of that coin. Anyway, having that, here's two sides of a coin that I like to read. It's self-effacing. I like being self-effacing. Uh, uh, and, and this is called Cameo, or Dried Cum Between My Legs. Uh, I'm reading before a crowd, in earnest, they're interested. The how do you do's and pretensions go around the house. You walk in, late as usual, and as you search for a seat, I stumble all over myself, quick. Somebody get the hook. Last night I wrote to you, rehearsed like Cyrano, down six cups of coffee, two packs of cigarettes, and still couldn't get it. My words, like bubbles, well-rounded, so gentle, glided on a whisper, grazed your cheeks, burst on your lips. It was alchemy and gone. I almost had it. I sleep alone, wait before dawn, dried cum between my legs, uh, wrestling with the words and you in the air. I almost had it, 
the perfect love poem. Until it comes, you are on the tip of my tongue. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. So here's another self fulfilling and uh, it's called No Laughing Matter. Should have been a clown, after all, so clumsy and awkward, make such a mess of the easy tasks. No wonder children find me funny. The boss says I'm a colorful character, confusing, amusing, says I could make coffee nervous. People down on the luck have to chuckle seeing my antics, gives them cause to start over. I got what it takes, a damn grand bozo, but when I'm alone, and that's often, I wonder, as your lover, do you feel the same? Being a clown is no laughing matter. After the laughter, sleeping alone, now honey, that'll make coffee nervous. <laughs> Okay. 